Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Clock Tower set. It is very heavily biased towards the events of Goblet of Fire, especially with the minifigure selection, but it is designed to be used throughout the entire series, and it can even be connected directly to other structures that they have made previously and others that they will make in the future. Because there are so many minifigures, let's go through those first. This is Madame Maxime, and appropriately, she is much taller than a regular minifigure. She has the exclusive print for the lower portion of the body there with the tall slope piece. She has the wand in a dark orange color, and all of the figures you're going to see here are actually in Yule Ball outfits. There's actually a little bit of metallic plating behind the paint, the kind of uh, lavender, lilac color. So you see that when the light hits it in certain ways, it shines pretty nicely. And most of the figures are in this entire line are going to have alternate faces. So she has a sad face and a relatively normal face. Here's a normal sized Dumbledore with his wizardly high fashion there. It's a pretty fancy looking figure with the relatively recent mold that was added to Lego's inventory, I think it was about a year ago, for the lower half of the body, for the lower part of the robes there. That's printed on the front and the back. Now the prints don't match up perfectly to the torso for a couple of reasons. First, there is a gap there that's pretty obvious, and also the white is not bright enough. But the level of detail on there is pretty nice. The headgear is dual molded, so the light gray for the hair is plastic, and also the dark tan for the cap itself is plastic, and only the brown color for the tassel is actually printed on with a paint application. The rest of the print on the torso looks very, very nice. The face is awkward when you don't have the beard on there, but it's really nicely done. Definitely nicer than it needs to be with more detail than it needs with all the facial hair little detailing that they added in and he does have two different expressions now the expressions themselves aren't that different from one to the next but you can see here he has the uh, half spectacles on the moon style uh, spectacles and then here he doesn't looking at the more senior students here's cedric diggory who looks pretty good as a figure the hairpiece to me looks very appropriate the wand is in dark brown. I think that the, the face, the facial expression looks pretty appropriate, but doesn't quite match the look of the actor. All of these things are based off the film ad adaptations of the story, but uh, still, uh, still a good looking figure, I think, that is recognizable enough. And this one does get two facial expressions, both very appropriate and useful. Here's Fleur Delacour with a very nice torso print with a little bit of metallic printing, actually quite a bit of metallic printing in there in the, the silver color. Too bad the skin tone for her neck is not opaque enough, you know, it's a little bit too gray. Also, there's no printing whatsoever on the lower part of the dress, once again using that specialized part, but this brings her up to the normal size of a regular adult style minifigure, and the hairpiece is done in light yellow. She also has two different facial expressions. And this one looks like it's printed a little bit better than this one. This just has some extra little micro-sized splotches of overprint. The last full-sized or adult-sized figure is Victor Crumb here, and he has a dark orange colored wand. I think the torso for him is absolutely perfect, with really nice detail for the belt buckle especially. I think that the hair is pretty appropriate. I think that the face is not serious enough. Even when that actor was smiling still, he didn't look quite this, uh, quite this kind and, I don't know, just jovial like that. It's not too far off, though. And there's the printing for the back of the torso. You also get an alternate face for him, which is a little bit more appropriate for for some scenes and I think just fits the the character a little bit better. Oh, and facial hair. That's what's missing. Facial hair. Figure needed facial hair. Harry Potter has the medium-sized legs, so he's a little bit shorter than an adult figure, but not as short as a child-style figure. And those medium-sized legs, which were introduced last year, are also able to articulate, unlike the child-sized uh, legs. So you can actually put this into a walking pose and have him lean forward and back. This figure looks pretty perfect to me for a an early to mid-teen Harry Potter from, from the movies. 
uh, from all angles. I think the level of detail is appropriate. I think that the hair looks really good. I like how it frames the face, shows the mark and everything. And once again, we do get two faces. Yeah, that is done very well. And that is good as well. Yule Ball Hermione is done differently. So they actually made her the exact same height as Harry Potter or any of the regular figures but with medium-sized legs and that shows you what the height of medium-sized legs is. It's a brick plus a plate. And that brick that's used for most of the front of the dress is printed. So it's an exclusive print for that. It's printed only on the front though, which looks a little bit awkward when you turn it around. I mean, that's that's a lot of detail there. But, you know, it provides the correct height and just does not provide any articulation, just like the skirt pieces generally don't. Uh, there's a lot of hair there. It's a pretty nice sculpt, pretty expressive. You know, there's a lot of movement to it. I think it's done well, and it looks good from many different angles. There's also a mini peg hole on the top of that, as I break her feet off. But you can put a, a bow or something in that from the LEGO Friends line. And, once again, we get an alternate face. And it's mad. I, th I think maybe a sad face would have been more appropriate, a little bit more memorable, more iconic for this movie and, and for this outfit. And last but not least, but kind of least, Ron Weasley, poor Ron, with the hand-me-down outfit. Uh, a lot of the print on there is actually, on, on the torso, is actually subtle because of the, the closeness between the two tones that they use there. But there you can see it a little bit better. It's actually a, uh, a gray that's printed against brown, so it's difficult to see. But I think the torso print there is done well. And it's also very well detailed around the back. Again, very subtle, but just look at all of that. Look at all that detailing in there. It's a, it's a complex pattern. It doesn't repeat except for just whatever you call the the red part there and this is another figure that has two faces i like that face it's a face unlike most things that we get from lego you know there's there's subtlety to it it's it's not just a straightforward happy or mad kind of face you know you can see some some thinking in there okay the main structure is a much more interesting build than i expected the actual assembly process has less repetition than i thought by far, and a lot more variance than I feel it absolutely needs. So the, the designer definitely went above and beyond to keep this from being too boring. You know, it's very easy to make something like this just all tan, you know, with some occasional changes over to the dark tan. But there, if, if you look closely, you can see that, you know, there isn't any, or there, there's very little mirroring from one section to another as you look left to right right to left you, you know there, there's not a lot that is done the same they they just change out little pieces in subtle ways from place to place and even some of the shapes occasionally change as you go through the process of building this up so there's the clock itself there is a mechanism to to turn that i'll actually just rotate it from the back so you can see it doesn't do much you know it just rotates the entire thing around and you can change the the individual hands, the individual arms there, you know, by themselves, but that's just a manual process. Nice prints for for both of these, but, you know, it would have been much nicer if they could have gotten uh, some mechanism in there to, to separate out the two hands, I guess. But I don't know how they would have done it without taking up a whole lot of space. Yeah, I really enjoyed putting this together. The roof goes together pretty nicely without too much gapping in there. And there are stickers. There are definitely stickers used. You'll see more of them around the back. There's just a subtle small one there. I believe there's a matching one on the other side. Yeah, back there in the corner. Move off here to the side. You know, scaling is definitely not ideal, but the look is pretty good. The assembly process, like I said, is definitely not boring. Everything feels like it makes sense and has a good place and keeps you interested as you put it together. So here's the, the real Yule Ball specific portion of it here with, with the dance floor. And they built this with the, the newer style 
gears that have the, the large lobes that'll just fit together. So the idea is that, you know, you put a figure on there, probably want to put them kind of, kind of close, not too much overlap. And you put another figure on there. Yeah, this is actually just barely going to work. You got to get them close enough. And then they'll, they'll spin. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit awkward, but yeah, they'll, they'll spin around like that. And you just have to do it manually. So there's no crank to make this work. You know, and you can just put four different pairs on these different platforms and they just spin around. And I'm just going to rescue Dumbledore there, who's probably feeling a little bit awkward right now, but that's just that. It's a, it's a nice little build. I think that the gimmick doesn't work all that well. If it had a separate crank to make that work, or if you just had an axle coming straight through here, or you could just turn the knob from the top, it would have been much better than having to get your hand way in there and turn this around. I really like these table builds. They're, yeah, they're, they're fairly complex, you know, for their, their size. And they're very nice. So this one just has some crystal decoration in the center. This one has a lot of crystal decoration. I believe that's a new color, just the plain trans clear for the one by one pyramid piece with only an anti-stud on the underside. It's just, it's just kind of a beautiful thing. I can just imagine people making a whole micropolis with architecture like that, you know, just nano sized fantasy places. And the last thing that is Yule Ball specific, or at least season specific, is the tree. Christmas tree here, I think it's safe to call it. it has some repetition in its build, but still looks fine. And they just have the star up on top. Looking around the back of the clock tower, there's nothing inside of the spires, though I guess you could put something there, <laughs> something very small. But the first main interior space, looking from the top, is the hospital wing. And this is where the crank is to operate the clock face on the front. So, you know, it's just very, very simple. I think the inclusion of the hospital wing here is very appropriate. In universe, the hospital wing is either in this structure or in one that's that's attached to it and it's very nearby I don't know exactly but it, it's definitely in this area so I think that it totally makes sense to put this here and for the amount of space I think they have a good amount of detail you can actually put figures either with the full length legs or the medium length legs on the beds and they will attach to the the two studs that are right there and there is enough space to put figures actually in here so you know, sometimes Lego, Lego structure builds, oh no, with her, with her feet again, I'm always breaking off her feet. Sometimes Lego st structure builds don't give you enough space to put figures in there, you know, facing either direction. And uh, this does have enough room. It has enough depth, you know, it doesn't have just two studs there. You have at least a three by three space on either side. And, you know, you can make some different things work. Just be careful about breaking off Hermione's feet. Now we'll have to retrieve those with a brick separator later on. Next down here is one version of the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, or shall we just call it Dada? And this is very small for a classroom. You know, you cannot put a lot of students in here, but I'm glad that there was only one sticker used for detail, typically, uh, a place like this would have a lot of stickers for a lot of its details, but you know, there's there's a lot of proper building with just regular pieces. I like the inkwell there, and this book can be opened up, and there is a single printed tile inside of it. I'm assuming that that's showing Wingardium Leviosa. Not Leviosa. Down here at the ground level, they have placed an entrance hall with just a goblet of fire over there on the right which I guess is appropriate in size and construction for something from Lego. I wish that they had done something fancier looking, but I think I understand its, its design. And on the left is just a chest and it's just empty. There's nothing in there. This adjacent spire takes some creative liberties with the placement of things like with the Defense Against the Dark arts classroom across from it and lego has to do things like this so this is dumbledore's office clearly not where it belongs but they have to do this because they have i'm sure a full plan for all of the structures that they're going to make in this new harry potter series that they're working on presently and they've had to lay out where 
important things will go and there's just not enough space in these small sets to place everything where it absolutely belongs so uh, you know you have to give them some forgiveness for for not putting everything exactly where canonically it's supposed to go I, I think they've done a pretty decent job though so Dumbledore's office here has space for him to sit at the at the seat although you know Dumbledore figures aren't able to sit so the idea is that you would just have him stand let me see if I can move his arm out of the way enough to just have him stand back there you know that's that it, it it works okay it's too bad that he's not able to actually sit though but at least the uh the seat of the chair is all the way down on the ground or close enough that it's not making him look too tall i've got the sorting hat back there and on the other side with these large stickers they used inside the curved panels they've also got fox uh, depicted back there just a sticker I think that could have been done as a as a small build off off to the side and then there are small stickers for the shelves and also some uh, some paintings on the side and I think that his table looks pretty good I think the sticker used on the front of that is awesome got the pensive over here and that's just that for his office Finally, on the ground floor of this space is a little bit of the Prefect's bathroom, again, to go with the events of Goblet of Fire. I tried putting it in the water if I were you. I think that this space is built up pretty nicely. I like the suggestion of the water flow coming from two of the spigots there. And the best thing here by far is the stained glass window, which depicts the mermaid who has been switched over to a, a Lego style, so a Lego minifigure style with the proportions and the styling of the face. Now that is a single sticker that you have to apply yourself to a large window piece. So if you get it wrong, it's gonna look potentially really, really bad. You have to be very, very careful when applying that. But if you get it right or even close to right, it looks really nice, especially when you look at it from the inside with light coming through it. I only wish they had done that as a printed piece wish it was in the in the budget because it is difficult and there is high risk it's not like they have a spare sticker for that included in the set at least they could have included a spare sticker that wouldn't have cost too much because you know if you just mess up one small thing i'm telling you it just messes up everything now here's a situation where things can really start to get interesting so this is the clock tower set that's covered in this video and i've attached to it the main hogwarts structure from the whomping willow set from last season and also the great hall over there so all these things can be connected together like i said there will be more in the future and there are also different ways that you can connect these together leaving different sections out or connecting them uh, with with different angles or to different sides this is a bigger topic so i will cover it in its own video where i'll show you more of the options but i wanted to be sure to to give you a little a little hint here a little tease to make sure that even if you're not going to watch that video you understand that this is part of a whole system and not just a series of standalone sets now check out the spare or leftover parts from this set there are a lot of them and a lot of them are pretty special pieces. This was nice to see. You know, this is all essentially just bonus material that you get. Overall, I am definitely happy with this set, especially having gone through the process of building it. I think this is definitely a case where if you assemble the thing, you will appreciate it much more than just looking at photos of it or seeing it on video or even seeing it in person. It just felt satisfying to me to go through the process of adding bricks on top of bricks on top of bricks and having them change, you know, not having a lot of repetition, not having a whole lot of mirroring from side to side and just being able to appreciate the amount of effort that went into creating small differences and making sure that, like I said, the, the whole main structure didn't end up looking or feeling boring. Obviously, the figures are a major draw, especially with the number of them here. And I think that most of the figures are done well. A couple of them have some shortcomings. But what I personally like least about the figures is that they are all based on the Yule Ball. And that just 
uh, well, I may be a bit biased there. I think Goblet of Fire was probably my least favorite of the Potter movies, and the Yule Ball portion of it in particular was probably my least favorite part of that movie. I mean, face it, it just wasn't designed for folks of my age. Just in general, though, I would have appreciated more general-use figures who would have made sense to be seen outside of the context of that particular event. Value-wise, I think the value is there. I mean, the price-to-part ratio is really good for a set that does have a fair number of fairly large pieces and that does have also such a large selection of figures. And those attributes are not completely offset by the inclusion of a whole lot of one by one bricks or one by one plates and tiles and things. You know, there aren't that many tiny details here that really inflate the part count. As always, if you want to see the full build process, you can see it in real time on my Pure Builds channel that is already uploaded and available. I do show every single step of the process and there's also no music in the background, so it's just the pure sounds of putting the pieces together. If you're looking for something a little bit quicker, I also have more of a traditional speed build version which has music and is sped up quite a bit. Thank you very much for watching and also stay tuned for more of my reviews to come as well as that special video covering just the connections of the clock tower to the other two major structure sets that have been made available so far. I'll talk to you again soon.